significant studio weather setup is on tap today for parts of the Midwest, including lots of Wisconsin, um, Chicago metro area, northern Indiana, and a broad portion of um, Michigan, but also spanning all the way down into Arkansas, um, Kentucky, basically, again, the entirety of Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin, um, a large area of Illinois as well, being under a, an all hazard risk today. Um, we have a 10% hatch tornado risk, and for much of this region, you have more than 15 times your normal tornado um, probability. We'll look at that in a second. As well as um, significant wind damage being possible here in Michigan and Indiana, especially, but really across the whole area. And in my opinion, the greatest threat, honestly, being the significant hail. We do not get big hail over here in the Midwest that often. And this could definitely be a big issue considering our current setup. Um, this this setup is going to hit especially Chicago um, portions of Wisconsin. I mean, basically the entire, entirety of Wisconsin needs to be at least somewhat weather aware today. Um, regions in the Chicago metro area as well. Um, especially considering, again, hail, I feel like might be the main threat. Uh, it can be a very large damage um, thing. Here's our normal tornado probabilities. You can see portions of Wisconsin. If you took any May 15th and gave it, you know, how what's the chance of you getting a tornado? Um, portions in this orange color are about 0.4%, and that's for, for uh, trial, tornado within 25 miles of you. Some other portions here in 20%, and you can see in our current setup, portions here in Wisconsin are way above their normal tornado probabilities for the day. So we have a level 3 out of 5 enhanced risk today, and we're going to be looking at the meteorology of that and understanding, you know, what will be causing our setup today. So here's our 500 millibar map. Um, you can already see here, we definitely have this big old trough. So we can see our cyclonic flow, as well as the stronger flow here. This is currently over Kansas and Oklahoma. I'll take a look at some soundings. Let me actually um, get those up real quick before I forget. We're going to also look at some soundings today as well, just to see our current, um, what our current setup looks like. But I'm using the RAP model right now. This is the 12C, so we'll be using um, just their initialization and all that. You'll see this trough's going to be moving on to the east, especially getting a little bit of a jet streak here, rounding the base of the trough. This will be advancing into, um, especially Illinois. You can also see the very negatively tilted nature of this trough. We've talked a good amount about that on this channel. But when a trough has this kind of tilt to the left like this, this is more indicative of severe weather, uh, more helpful. You get more of that divergence. If you look at 250 here, you'll see we definitely get some divergence over here in Wisconsin as well. In Wisconsin, Minnesota there. And even even over some, but just a broad area of divergence here that will assist our severe weather setup for the day. But this jet streak will advect off into Illinois, and pretty strong, um, almost 90, no, oh, actually 90 knots here in some of these locations. So pretty strong jet streak here at 500 millibars, and that will help our severe weather setup. I'm going to zoom into the Midwest now because you can see the idea of this trough. Excuse me, very deep up here, 54, 60 meters um, geopotential height. So pretty deep trough. Um, regarding temperature, not really too cold aloft. Um, I believe some of these upper Midwest areas might be affected by this colder air. That might help thermodynamically, but over in Illinois, Indiana, that's not really the case here. And there's more, we'll see why this is more of a severe setup in a second there. Um, 700 millibars, possible semblance of a shortwave here. Maybe a little bit of a, a little tiny minute maximized jet streak here as well. Might aid in some storm development over Illinois. You can also see again, just the, the broad forcing over a large region. I think 850 millibars. Let's look at dew point. You can see we definitely have some moisture in here. Possibly some concerns with moisture at 850 here. I'm um, looking at Illinois specifically. You can see a lot of the other regions, Wisconsin, Minnesota, have a lot of moisture that's occluding low. Illinois does have a little bit of an issue. You can see some of these kind of lowered regions, possible dry air at 850. And our temperature is very warm here as well. Lots of warm air infection um, across the entire profile. Um, theta E as well is very, that's your measure of instability is theta E. And this is very, pretty high instability um, going to be going on today. I want to look at moisture, though, because on some of the past runs, we have had this issue of moisture being a lot more chalky. This is the, the yesterday's 21Z run. You see, again, we have a lot less moisture here. Um, we still have a lot of these this deep moisture, but where it's going to be is a little bit of the question. However, from what I can understand today, this won't be as much of an issue. I do wish I'd make a video about this yesterday, um, but the idea of this is that it could be a lot of pretty dry air. You don't want your storms to be ingesting that. Um, well, if you don't want storms, you want your storms to invest dry air. But for storms to develop, they don't like invest ingesting all that dry air at the lower levels like that. This might be occurring today, but it looks like this might be aided by storm development down here in Missouri, helping to mix in some moisture from the surface. And lastly, looking at the surface map, um, you can see up here we definitely have this low pressure, very occluded low pressure. Um, we have a, a, a little bit of theta east, so you can really see our frontal boundaries here. Um, you get red. 
There we go. You can see our warm fronts here. Oh, this isn't going to stick out very well. We're low here. Um, I would say kind of a warm front somewhere in this. Sorry, you can't see that red at all. That's unfortunate. I'll, I'll use the pink. I'll use the pink. Sure. This warm front somewhere around this vicinity. Um, our low is over here, but we have we have a, an occlusion going on, especially throughout the day. Move forward here, you can really see that occlusion going on. I'm um, kind of this trailing cold front, but you can see with the theta E here, a very unstable air mass moving into regions in Illinois. And a pretty slow moving cold front for the most part. Um, here's one county here, and this doesn't even cross the entire county. So you almost want to call this a dry line. So we kind of have this plain setup building up in the Midwest. I'm looking at our temperatures today, it should be pretty hot um, across, especially a lot of northern Illinois, but there is this kind of I wouldn't call it cooler area because it's 85 degrees, but cooler than up here. And this will be more helpful for storm development. Looking at relative humidity, drier air to the left or to the west here in portions of western Illinois and in Iowa here. And more of that um, rich moisture over here, increasing obviously as temperatures fall. So we'll have that good relative humidity. Um, probably not very large temperature and dew point spreads. Um, looking at our dew point as well, um, pretty 60s are already in place, I believe. Let me actually get some surface obs here. Um, we'll go to the wrap surface analysis. Let's go right here to Midwest. Whoops, thought I wanted. There we go. Yeah, oh, nearly 70s in, in place over some of this region. K lot. Yeah, Romeoville showing 70 dew points. Very widespread high 60s over much of um, Illinois today. And actually, a little bit more veered flow, which is probably better for severe weather development. This is 14Z. You can see if you look at our surface map, I believe. We do still have that veer flow, so this is pretty accurate though. Um, but the moisture is actually a little bit higher in real life right now than the model runs are showing. So that is interesting to take a note of. But you can see our, our moisture, and moisture is definitely at play. And that lower moisture, probably off to the west. Let me see if I can get a good... Yeah, lower moisture out here, see 47 and 48. Excuse my bird in the background. Um, but yeah, pretty good moisture today. And the big issue I have with the setup is going to be um, how your moisture goes with height. So looking, we're going to build our, where our dry line is. It's going to be right here. You can see the, the separation, oops, separation of the moisture there. Going to 850, it looks like our moisture does remain. This is something I saw in the, the last model runs where we would kind of miss out on the moisture with height. I'm going to see if this is still in place. If it's not, I will show you what I saw yesterday. Yeah, here we go. So the pink line here is where our 850 millibar moisture line is. And you can see we have this moisture, oops, this moisture closer to the dry line um, or cold front on the surface. But if we take a sounding from in the middle of the two, you'll see that we kind of have this dry air building in. This is one in inhib inhibition that I'm a little bit worried about with storms today, but otherwise they should be firing. I'll take our first observed or um, forecast sounding here. You can immediately see the amount of cape we have in this profile. It's kind of ridiculous. But the lower levels here, you can see some of this moisture. Let me go back two hours to where we had our moisture kind of combined in the same location like we wanted for storms to form. So let's see how this looks. Uh, there we go. See, there's a lot better profile. 5,500 joules per kilogram of of um, CAPE. That is incredible. Very high values, especially for the Midwest in May. Um, very good photograph here. It, it, it could be a little bit more out of the south or the east, but <laughs> it's just complaining. Oh my gosh, I didn't even know that went to six digits. Yeah, SRH is a little, maybe a little bit better. It could be a little bit better, but this these storms are going to be explosive. This is a lot of instability. Um, so we'll have very unstable air mass today. And this, I mean, for those weather nerds out there, you see this and kind of gawk at it. The lifted index is negative, 14, negative 13. So at 500 millibars, the air that is rising will be 13 degrees Celsius warmer than the atmosphere. And they, that means just really explosive buoyancy. Um, so these storms will really be, really be moving upwards in the atmosphere. So once you get storm initiation, these are going to blow up. Um, very supercellular in all regards. Definitely hail producers, just given the amount of instability. Um, it's a lot of PY as well. But you can see the difference between these two soundings. This is at 22Z, basically the same location here. Um, but notice how our first sounding early on has this a lot better moisture content throughout the profile. But looking at our second sounding later on, you can see a little bit of a capping building in because of the dry air. Um, this this is 10 degrees Celsius, what, I believe that's you know, like 50 degrees Fahrenheit dew point compared to a, maybe, maybe like, I mean, that's like a 70 um, degrees 
temperature here at like 900, probably 925, just combining these together. But that's that's a very large temperature dew point. It's been very, very close to the surface like that. And even the surface itself, 10 degrees there. Earlier on, you still have that 10 degree difference, but you have warmer air and more moisture content. That's the only thing that's really an issue today is going to be our moisture content. That's the thing I'm main, mainly concerned about. You can see our environment though. It's very much primed for severe weather today. Um, but that's going to be the main issue. More up north, we're going to have more um, elevated storms, most likely. Let's just yeah, do a little bit of a capping staying in place. Uh, actually, let's look at Cape real quick, just looking at it. You'll see earlier on in the day today, we should have a lot of instability already built in. Actually, that's a perfect segue. Let's look at our observed soundings. Um, here's Illinois. Yeah, you can already see an Illinois. Oh, wow. Um, oh, that's most unstable parcel. Surface-based parcel is not um, this unstable. But... You will see here that we have a little bit of a, you can see the eml in here this little bit of a capping inversion so this could be an issue earlier on in the day this is lincoln illinois so that might be actually shouldn't be too removed yet we definitely see that drier air going on as you go up with height but good moisture at the moment um let's see what davenport has yeah but still the elevated instability a little bit of setting i think we're missing a few of the stations unfortunately here um, here is, I think this is Minneapolis. If, yeah, it should be Minneapolis here. More of that elevated instability going on, and that could really aid in this storm development. Um, most likely going to be more elevated convection up here, but so let's just take a sounding up here. Um, oh, oh, sorry. A little scattered-brained. Um, I forgot to mention the simulated reflectivity. Here is simulated reflectivity here. Um, what your radar will basically look like. You get some storms early on in the day. This could help to mix in some of that better moisture up into the atmosphere. Remember that a lot of this moisture is being infected this direction. Some of these storm development might actually help bring up some of the surface moisture and then infect it off to the north, maybe helping to um, retain the moisture contents in that region for a little bit longer. Um, the HRRR shows pretty widespread storm development, basically right at 23 and about 0Z here. Um, and that's when storms will be firing. Looking at NAM Nest, very similar story. They have a little bit more open warm sector development and a little slower moving frontal boundary here but you can see a little bit of this wind punch going on with the nam nest as well um but the the intense nature of these storms if you look at echo tops through the h r you'll see these are just huge storms like it's like almost fifty thousand feet up so these are some very strong storms overshooting tops being shown here definitely have something on tap for today so that's the main point of this video actually let me look at the hodograph map here too and there's just so much to go on with this setup today I mostly want to focus on the Illinois area because that's what I'm most tuned for. But yeah, photographs. You'll just take a sounding in here. I'm curious. Um, instability up here is going to be more of the elevated kind, but there should be plenty of forcing for these storms. You all know I love my soundings on this channel. I might have to make more of a video on how to look at a sounding and read it. Here is our. St oh, wow, oh, that is a lot of Cape. Three Cape. Also, I forgot to mention the past one. This is our 22Z in Illinois. 177 three Cape. Same thing here in Wisconsin. Lots of instability in the lower levels. 194. Pretty potent setup today, especially for the more northern regions of this of this um, area here. Looking at vorticity and three cape boundaries here, you can see it's very prevalent along this boundary here in Wisconsin. Could end up with a lot of tornadoes on any boundaries there. Um, here, same thing here. Lots of three cape. That's yeah, pretty impressive um, throughout here. So. Overall, this is going to be a pretty potent day. Um, oh yeah, and remember your your risks are especially hail, but also that tornado risk and wind damage risk. Um, I, I mean, tornadoes are going to be the most dangerous portion, obviously, but widespreadness, you often get storms, you know, you'll say the chance of getting hit by a tornado might be lower, but hail storms do affect a larger area, and that could be more of a concern for everyone today. So do keep an eye on the weather. Um, heed any severe thunderstorm warnings, if you have helmets or anything like that for underground that's always a good idea um but yeah just want to outline these risks um again level three out of five enhanced risk today so um confidence is certainly there for us for your weather today and the models are aiding in that confidence today so please keep an eye out for the weather um this is a lot of him this would be a lot of hail if you can see the h triple r more discrete cells even kind of an illinois just so Again, just a potent day. Please keep an eye on the weather. But that's about it for this video. Again, if you've enjoyed, please let me know. If you have any feedback or anything, again, let me know. But that's it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.